A roll of Konica film, please. Konica? Konica. Blue box? Carl! Do we carry Konica? Konica? Konica. Konica, right? Konica, Konica. Now, Konica Color を買って100年プリントにすると。フォトスタンドかドラえもんアルバムかマグカップが漏れなくもらえますこの上りのお店でどうぞフィルムはアメリカのフィルムは The first SLR with auto exposure. The first SLR with a motorized film advance. And yet, the newer generation of film photographers, such as those who started during the COVID 19 pandemic and newcomers to film photography who have had most of their exposure on video sites such as YouTube, have never heard of Konica. Film photography lovers who are just starting to shoot film in 2021 might not realize that at one point, Konica was the bleeding edge of camera technology, developed many types of cameras, and had its own chain of retail and film processing stores, created top selling emulsions around the world. And laid the foundation for one of the most successful digital camera lineups in modern history. This is the story of Konica. Konica's story begins in 1873. A full 14 years before a little American startup called Eastman Kodak was founded, a pharmacist named Rakusaburo Sugiara began importing and selling photographic materials from his store in Tokyo. His store quickly became the largest pharmacy in Konishia Rokube. Rakusaburo succeeded his family and changed his name to Rokuman Sugiara. Five short years later, after demand for photography supplies outpaced the traditional medical supplies being sold in his pharmacy, Rokusaburo opened his own separate shop and named it Konishi Honten, which means Konishi Main Shop, and relocated to the Nihonbashi district of Tokyo while giving the pharmacy to his younger brother. In the 1880s, all photography equipment and related materials had to be imported to Japan, but Konishi Honten had a project that was started to produce all of those products locally. Konishi Honten quickly became the leading camera and supplies developer in Japan. And in 1903, they began selling Japan's first brand name camera, the Cherry Portable Camera, along with Japan's first photographic paper, Sakura Hakin type paper. In 1921, Rokuman's older son succeeded him, and a college was founded to administer the will left by Rokuman. The Konishi Professional School of Photography, present day Tokyo Polytechnic University, produced and still produces many prominent photographers to this day. There was another name change for the company, now Kanoshi Roku Honten. The new name, Konoshi Roku, was taken from the abbreviation of their names, Konishi and Rokuman. In 1940, Konishi Roku Honten released the first color film to ever be produced in Japan, Sakura Natural Color Film, named after the famous cherry blossoms that typically fall from late March to April in Japan. After World War II and the rebuilding of Japan, Konoshi Roku released the Konica 1 in 1946, their first 35mm film camera to see full production. In 1987, the company would see its final name change to Konica in honor of this camera. Following camera releases would lead to the Konica Pearl, a folding 645 camera, the Kony Flex, a TLR style camera made to compete with the likes of Yoshika and Mamiya, the Konica C35EF, the first camera with built in flash, the Auto Reflex line, which features the first SLR with auto exposure as well as the first camera with an automatic film advance, a massive amount of point and shoots, and finally, an incredible cream of the crop rangefinder, the Konica Hexar RF, a camera body with features that were miles ahead of the Leica at the time. Konica was huge all over the world. It had its own film development stores. It sold over 30 different emulsions. They manufactured around 130 different types of cameras and even more lenses. So, what happened? In 2003, Konica merged with Minolta to become Konica Minolta. They lost the rainbow logo and digital cameras took over. A shift began for the company as they saw the writing on the wall regarding the upcoming film photography apocalypse. The inevitable shift to digital camera sensor technology, as well as doubling down on Minolta's already popular and profitable line of Xerox copiers and printers, left little room for Konica and Minolta's previously very prominent and expansive film photography lineups. In March 2006, the merged company closed down its photo imaging division, which produced color film, color paper, photochemicals, and digital mini lab machines. Its digital SLR camera division was sold and transferred to Sony, and would later be developed into the Sony Alpha line. The Alpha line had a rough start. But over the past decade, it's featured some of the world's most top class mirrorless cameras, all directly spawned from this acquisition from Konica. Minolta was never able to make headway into the modern camera market. Konica shut down its stores and all of its film production, and Konica's, along with pretty much all film cameras, were sent away to vintage stores or left in the hands of enthusiasts. Konica Minolta now strictly sells photocopiers and other imaging technology, far from its photography roots that started over 140 years ago. 
Today, Konica cameras are perceived as bargain bin, and a full kit can sometimes be had for under $100. But the price on eBay is deceiving. Walk into any vintage camera store with a healthy boomer working there and ask them about Konica. Watch the look on their face as nine times out of ten they will compliment you on your vintage camera knowledge before directing you to a cabinet full of auto reflex cameras, paired with some of the most amazing AR mount glass. Almost the entire lineup is bulletproof, besides the TC models they made in the 80s when a lot of camera companies started using plastics in their cameras instead of solid metal. But the camera bodies aside, the glass is famous the world over in all of their cameras, and is criminally underrated. Konica lenses were named Hexanon. The optical quality of most Hexanon lenses is regarded as truly superb, with very unique color rendition and sharpness in many of their prime lenses. Many cameo manufacturers of interchangeable lenses produce a few great lenses among their line, but Konica managed to achieve near excellent quality over a broad range of focal lengths and lens tests conducted by photographic publications over the years. Legend has it that the Hexanon lenses were even used by the Japanese government as the standard against which all other lenses were measured until after World War II. The 40mm 1.8 Pancake is a strange focal length between a wide and a portrait lens, but it is short enough to fit on an SLR and slide into my fanny pack. It is my staple lens, and this is the lens attached to my Konica's 90% of the time. The 85mm 1.8, while on a spec sheet isn't very exciting, produces wonderful, unique bokeh with a pleasing softness wide open. Stop down a few times, it's as sharp as a tack, and looks spectacular adapted to a mirrorless camera. If you're lucky enough to own a rangefinder with an M mount, then you can enjoy Konica's 50mm 1.2 M mount lens, which is arguably the same quality as the significantly more expensive Leica Summicron, but with its own unique color rendition and bokeh fall off. This lens even shares similar architecture to that of the Leica. So what's the deal? Why doesn't film YouTube shill for these cameras like they do Mamiya's, Contact Zeiss Glass, Leica's, etc? You know, I think it has to do with a few main reasons. Uh, for one, while they may have been innovative in their time, the cameras, I think, come off as boring to most people. And that's forgettable. Uh, most of their cameras are either fully automatic or fully mechanical. And besides their most innovative cameras, uh, there was never a real professional SLR body. You know, something like a Nikon F4 or Canon Zeos line. And I think this leads to the second factor that I think stops people from getting into Konica's. Um, and it's the perceived pedigree. Konica's history is deep, but it's hard to draw a straight line between their advancements. From the Nikon F1 to the Nikon F6, there is an evolution that takes place right before your eyes. Um, in comparison, Konica's auto reflex line just pales in comparison, and Konica's jump to their more advanced line would soon be behind the rest of the camera industry. Want a TLR camera? You could buy a Koniflex, it's great, but the glass just isn't as fast as its Mamiya or Yashica counterpart. Medium format? Uh, the offerings are pretty slim. You've got the Konica Pearl, uh, but it's an 80-year-old folding camera. You know, perhaps it would just be better to get something like a Mamiya or a Bronica if you want to do medium format. Rangefinder, Voigtlander, Canon, Leica all offer cheaper alternatives. Uh, the Konica Hexar RF is still two to $3,000 if you want it, and you can just buy a Leica for that money. Even as a Konica lover myself, I really can't recommend some of these cameras, practically speaking. But as someone who owns most of these Konica cameras, or have tried most of the others, the real gold is the auto reflex line. The AR mount lenses are fun to collect, and they look great either on a Konica body or adapted to any mirrorless camera. They are made of two things, metal and glass. And most can be had for a fairly affordable price, besides the several unicorn lenses like the 85mm and the 28mm. But now I'm curious. Do you use any Konica brand cameras? And if so, what do you like to shoot with? And do you think Konica cameras are underrated? Why don't you let me know in those uh, comments down below. And while you're down there, why don't you give me a like and also subscribe to my YouTube channel. We're on the road to 1,000 subscribers so that I can become partnered. And uh, basically every subscriber helps.